Hello my friends, welcome back to A Common Touch of Fantasy. Uh, my name is Paul, and today is a walkthrough review of The Magicians by Lev Grossman. A walkthrough review is basically me walking you guys through the entire book and talking about what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it. These super major spoilers I won't talk about. Uh, the revelations, the twists, those type of things, I'm not going to talk about those. But like the minor spoilers, I probably will talk about quite a bit. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Hope you guys enjoy this. The Magicians by Lev Grossman. Right at the beginning, I thought, wow, this is a book that I'm really going to like. I remember at page 30, I did a Goodreads update. I said, wow, I know I'm going to like this book. And that's because there's a vibe in this book. It's very, very angsty, very dark in a way. Because these characters are aren't perfect these characters are a little bit broken and the reason for that is because a lot of these characters are very intelligent and so it has this feel of depressiveness because you know a lot of times more intelligent people have a better chance of developing depression issues or anxiety issues things of that nature and you can feel that in this book you can feel that sometimes the hopelessness that is going on in this story, you know, it can, you can notice it. So if you're not into those type of books, this book is definitely not one for you. But if you've gone through some stuff in your life, uh, this might be something that you might connect to. So right away we have Quentin, James, and Julia. They're like really smart kids. They're graduating high school. They're about to go off to college. And at first you think this is going to be the story these three people going into this magic uh high school magic college actually but it's not it's about quentin going there and when quentin goes to this interview that he doesn't really know much about and he finds that the person is dead he everything just kind of flips upside down he meets this like mysterious beautiful paramedic in this book you know the Everyone is really attractive in this book. I'll just put it out there. And yes, Lev Grossman does talk about, you know, hormones and <laughs> hooking up and things of that nature. And from the point of view of Quentin, he does talk about females quite a bit. So if that annoys you, it's probably not going to be for you as well. But anyways, you know, he goes to this place. The guy's dead. He meets this beautiful paramedic. He ends up finding his way to break bills and Elliot outside break bills and basically he doesn't know what's going on and it's a magical college and he goes in and he's taking tests and trying to figure out if he can be accepted to break bills he doesn't really know what it is at first but as he's taking all these tests he realizes that it has something to do with magic and I like this part of the story quite a bit and the reason why I liked it was because there was such a mysterious aura over the whole thing, and learning about break bills as Quentin learns about it is really great. And the standout scene, of course, is when uh, Quentin does an actual real magic trick and makes the cards fly in the air, then collapse into a the replicate replica of the break bills mansion. An amazing scene that was probably my favorite scene in the whole story and so he meets penny and alice at break bills they're in the same class they study together but penny and him don't really get along all that well they actually have a fight and it's basically because penny is jealous that quentin and alice are spending so much time together uh the classes are interesting it's more of like a logical analytical form of magic where they try to you know have to put into many factors many different variables when casting a spell and it has a lot to do with the what you use the tone of voice and how you say the syllables and your hand gestures and stuff and i like that i thought that was cool but it's at this point of the book when i realize it's moving quickly it's going through their time at the school rather quick and the books that quentin read as a kid which are the fillery books become more and more important to the story and 
to the conversations with all the kids. And, I mean, it's not a spoiler to say they end up in Fillory, because the map of Fillory is on the back part of the book. So, obviously, they're going to go to Fillory if there's a map of Fillory in the book, okay? So, they, um, you know, Penny goes off and does his own thing now, and now they're in this physical kid's domain, I guess. They're kind of in this, like, sorority or fraternity, but... Basically, it's the physical kids, and they're, like, really special at school. Quentin and uh, Alice get invited into it, but they have to break into the house, which is a great scene with them uh, putting fire to the house in order to break in, and they're just in there waiting for them with glasses of wine, which I thought was funny. And so they progress with their magic, and they become closer to Elliot and Janet and Josh, the other people that are in the physical kids. Uh dormitory i guess uh group and it's it's great then they go south and this is where it turns a little weird but i liked it you know they turn into these uh geese and they fly all the way to the south pole and they meet this hermit type magician there and at this place they actually do really difficult magic and they have to use it to survive and one of the best scenes is this scene where Quentin is going to the South Pole, like 500 miles, and he's doing it naked, and he has to reach there, uh, only using magic and on his feet. It's a great scene that I really liked, okay? The relationship with Alice then starts to form. Um, Alice and Quentin become a couple, and they progress in a relationship. The graduation happens, they graduate from school, and so you're like halfway through the book and they graduated and you realize this is not a trilogy about kids in college and a magician school. Uh, this is a trilogy about what happens after they're out of school. And I didn't really realize that until now, until this point in the book. And it's interesting because after they get out of school, they go to Manhattan and they live with Josh, Janet, uh, Elliot, and then this Richard guy, which is kind of a... A weird person is, I don't know, it's like some hipster magician. But anyways, they go to Manhattan, and their life seems kind of pointless. You know, they saw the most magical thing, the most prominent thing in their world, but now they have to live life rather mundanely. And so they kind of go off the deep end with drugs, alcohol, partying, because they don't have that adventure in their life. They're finding out that being a magician isn't that great when there's nothing really to battle against. Like, there's no great evil to go against. But, of course, all that changes when Penny comes back with the magic button that was in the books from Fillory. They find out that Fillory is real, that all the books did actually happen, and then they go to Fillory. But before that, they go to a place called the Netherlands. Netherlands. <laughs> and they uh, they kind of just explore that place where it looks all the same. But each kind of fountain, each place goes to like a different world. And so they find the fountain, the area that goes to Fillory. And they go to Fillory. And this is when the book completely drops off for me because I don't like Fillory. <laughs> It's a world where, with talking animals, uh, anamorphic animals, animals that kind of look human, and they meet some adventurers, and they go on this quest to get the crowns to become the kings and queens of Fillory, because only humans can do that. And this is when the book kind of yeah, goes down for me. I was really excited about this book up to this point, and then it just didn't feel feel right it didn't fit like the tone of the book up to this point was a different beast completely and it just didn't really work for me all that much and the action scenes at, at this point were not written very great i didn't really like them that much but it gets to this point where you know the big reveal happens who's the bad guy what's happening uh, with the different gods and the different characters and the battles and stuff. And basically, it ends with this climactic thing where Quentin, you know, 
is back in the real world. He's trying to live like a normal life because, you know, at, at this point he's kind of broken. And I kind of like this part of the story at the end just because it's back in the real world and he's dealing with his issues. And, um, you know, but of course it can't end there because there's two more books. And so something happens where he gets pulled back in. Now, I like this book. It wasn't super amazing or anything. I listened to most of it on audio. But I thought once it entered the fantasy world of Fillory, it really just dropped off. It didn't work for me. But the scenes of them in Break Bills, the scenes of them living outside of Break Bills as, as well... I thought those were great. What I want from this series is watching magicians have to deal with real life, but yet they have this amazing ability, amazing power. So I'm not sure what the rest of the series will give me. Hopefully if more of Fillory is in this series, then uh, it'll be done a little bit better. Overall, it was a good read. And I would recommend it to people that want to read a darker, grittier college version of Harry Potter, basically. If you don't like pessimism or nihilistic type thinking, I would probably stay away from this. All right, this has been a walkthrough review of The Magicians by Lev Grossman. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you guys another day.